Hello and welcome on DDS DR programming channel. I'm Max and today we will talk about how we can call Julia from R and we will do some speed comparison and basically the question is going to be whether we can improve our R code and R speed with Julia and how do we go about doing it if we know R but not much about Julia. Uh, this video is a follow-up from the video last week where last week we learned how to change our code in R so that we can go sometimes uh, as fast as 10,000 time, 10, times faster. By going through those steps last week, we, were, um, we, we used six different approaches. And the idea today is to take those approaches and apply them in Julia and recode them in Julia. And so we'll take the code from last week and, and transform it to make it run in Julia. And then we will time and uh, do a comparison of speed. Yeah, so that's it. Let's get going. Last week, we started by generating our uh, data set, and it was a data set of viewer ID and movie IDs, and we wanted to calculate the viewer coupling. So basically, what is the number of time that two viewers shared uh, movies together, or they, they have watched the same movies. To do this, we generated a data set, and so this is the same code from last week. We started with uh, 2,500, and I do that because the first algorithm is quite slow in R, and anything bigger than that, it runs for like 10 minutes. And I am not that patient, so I will not wait 10 minutes to run my R code. And so the first thing we need to do when we want to use Julia in R is we want to use the package, load the package, uh, Julia call. And so Julia setup, it, it will launch a Julia session. And this takes uh, always a bit of time, like uh, 30 seconds or something like that. And to start it, I have to give it a path. Okay, so this is exciting. We see that um, we could set up our Julia. A session and everything is loaded and we use Julia 1.4 which is the most recent version right now. So we have a Julia session then we will need some Julia libraries and so we will call Julia library and just write the name of the Julia library we need. We need to make sure that those libraries are installed but right now the, the one we need is data frame so Julia library we load that and then we want to assign our data frame uh, to Julia. Uh, so I want to assign our data frame that is in R and then go assign it to a data frame in Julia. The first algorithm was really one where we don't uh, think too much and we just, you know, pre-allocate, uh, we, we don't even pre-allocate our data frame. We just create, initialize an empty data frame. And then we go two times through the viewer ID list. For this algorithm, we even stopped there because I knew it was going to be very slow. And so I did not even implement uh, how we would aggregate uh, those counts so that we get only a unique pair of viewer one to viewer two and then a count of how many times they appear together. So question today is, how much faster would that be if we had implemented the simple algorithm in Julia? And the idea here is that writing Julia code, you will see, you know, it's pretty similar than R. I will actually retake that code and just uh, do some syntactic change to make it run in Julia. And now we will start creating a Julia function. And so for that, I use Julia command and I put that into uh, parentheses. And so basically everything I will put in it will be Run, uh, will run on the Julia interpreter and in the, in the Julia session. And so what I will do here is just defining the session. Yeah, later on, I will run a Julia eval uh, to evaluate that, that function with the data frame DF. So I will calculate version one of the algorithm. And in Julia, uh, so you use the keyword function first function, and then you uh, call your function with the name that you expect to give it. Then we will also give it a variable uh, DF. And in Julia, you don't need the curly uh, braces. So you remove the first one and the syntax that will mark the end of your function definition is just the end keyword. Uh, then the other thing is the arrows won't work in Julia. It's just a normal equal sign that we will use. And we don't define data frame with a data point frame, but rather with data with a capital and then frame with a capital without the point. Uh, this will work, but this is not the way to initiate um, a numeric uh, value in Julia. I'll show you how we do that here. So in Julia, to initiate a vector of zeros or of integers, uh, we can do it like that. Now the for loops. The for loops are also similar, but we remove the parentheses and the curly braces. And in the end, we put the end curly braces. And the end row is a function in Julia and a minus one. And this way of calling is also a function in Julia. So this will work. Then we remove again those uh, characters and put an end in the end. If statement, again, uh, the same, we remove the surrounding uh, parentheses, remove the curly braces, change that with an end. And then in Julia, to get a column, uh, we don't use 
a string, we use what they call a symbol, and so we put the two uh, double points in, in front instead, and so like that. So that will go and index our data frame. Equal equal is the same. Data frame is data with a capital and frame with a capital letter. And so this is the double points here, and then that should work. Uh, change the arrow for equal sign. We don't use our bind. We use uh, it's vcat and hcat. And so in this case, we will go vertical, so it will be vcat. The return does not need the parentheses. Okay, so that's our Julia function. Let's uh, run our R function, and then let's do a time comparison of both. For this, I will use the function benchmark from the package R benchmark. And then to call a Julia function, you need Julia eval, Julia eval, and uh, in this case, I want to evaluate the function calculate. Okay, but before we run uh, Julia eval in the benchmark, I will run it once uh, so that Julia can compile it. And compiling takes a bit of time; it's never that long. But I think if you are at the point where you optimize, it's probably that you're uh, working on something like a function that will run for a long time or that will run very often. And so you worry more about how much it is to call it every time, not about how long is it to call it the first time you launch a program. And so we run that, Julia Ival, okay, it's, it's done. And now we can run the benchmark and I will uh, get my replication down because like I said the other time, the R version is quite slow. And so let's go for five time. Okay, let's run. So we see that um, the R version is 58 times slower than the Julia version. And so that's that's quite significant. Um, yeah, so here you have it. First example, the second version was one where it was pretty much identical, except that instead of growing our data frame, so just like adding one part of the data frame to the next and to the next, uh, we uh, initialized it in the right uh, size. So we pre-allocated our vectors uh, by guessing how big is our final table going to be. We have this here, so that's where you see that we got the numbers of rows in our data frame and did time 20. And so this is based on the assumption that no viewer is gonna be paired on average with more than 20 other viewers uh, according to the movie ID match, to a match on the movie ID. And let's start making it a Julia function. And in Julia, we have the uh, increment uh, symbol like that. And so we can just say counter increment by one. That should be pretty much it. Oh, in Julia, if we want to get all the columns of something, we can't keep it empty. Uh, we have to put a column. Okay, let's wrap this up into a Julia command. So this whole code is going to be uh, evaluated or run within a Julia interpreter. And then let's evaluate it. So Julia eval. And so this whole thing will be evaluated in Julia and the resulting data frame will be returned to R. And so now we will time it against the R version. Now let's see the results of this version 2 comparison. Well, uh, in this case, Julia was 85 times faster, so relative uh, time it took for the R version is 85 times uh, more. And so that's quite a speed up again. Let's go to the third version. The third version was one where, well, we changed the algorithm a bit to be able to use more vectorized way of computing things. We also use a different data structure. Uh, we use the list to be able to kind of uh, very quickly use an index and then get some values and increment those values. This was a bit longer, but the R code was already a bit longer. But you saw that adapting R code to Julia code is not that difficult and it doesn't require that many changes in how, in, in things you know and in the, the syntax and the logic of your code. So if you're not used to Julia, but you know R, um, it should be, you know, it should be doable to recode it to get some performance game gain. Okay, let's test this out. We wrap this up into a string and then into a Julia command function in R. And then we will time that. Timings are done. And what is the speed difference? Well, in this case, uh, the R code was 131 times slower than the Julia code. And one interesting thing is that, if you have noticed, is that V1, V2, and V3, they have been going up in the gain uh, that you do with Julia. And so, yes, the version 3 is already much faster in R than the version, version 2 in R, but it is that much more uh, faster in Julia. 
with this global comparison, we can see that the fastest version is the third Julia version, and it is 4,000 times faster than the slowest R version. On that note, let's keep going. And now let's implement the linear algebra approach uh, that we took in R into Julia. Julia is uh, well built for linear algebra, just like R, and so that should be uh, quite doable. Uh, this was one of the fastest uh, implementation in R. Actually, the, the three next implementation in R were quite equivalent. Uh, the data table one was a bit faster, but not by much. And we also discussed in the other video that, you know, it, 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 at, at this point, those algorithms, they will one will perform better than the other, depending on the, the characteristic of your data type and, uh, and on other factors. Okay, so now let's test it with Julia uh, eval. So this was it for how we uh, transform our linear algebra into Julia linear algebra. And let's do a small benchmark of that. Now, I think uh, this should be tighter because it was quite a good uh, R version. And so the timing is, yeah, so the Julia version was five, uh, almost six times faster than the R version. But you see that for this implementation, R is doing quite well. And in the end, this is because they are both implemented in the same uh, C uh, functions or C, they use the same C code. So there is some very, very optimized uh, C code for linear algebra. I don't know if it's C or C++, but there's a library that uh, implements linear algebra on a computer very efficiently. And both R and Julia go and use those, those, this library behind the scene. Now, last but not least, we are going to compare the dplyr package and or and or the data table package to an equivalent data frame manipulation package in Julia. And so those two will be compared to only one option in Julia. Now, let's make some room for the Julia implementation. And so let's just copy that R code and that should work. So that's it for the kind of the data frame version uh, of our computation in Julia. So now we will put that into Julia command in R and let's test it out. Okay, and it worked. So now, once again, let's do our benchmark. Okay, now I'm kind of excited and let's look at the results. So which was the fastest? Well, the fastest was data table and then the second fastest was Julia and the third was dplyr. We see in this case, they are very close to each other and so this is good news for our user and it means that if you know how you could approach your problem by doing uh, some data frame manipulation with data table you are probably up there in the speed uh, speed wise and performance wise and this is because data table was very 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 well optimized by its developer when you use data table you are pretty much guaranteed that the tabular transformation that you are doing are some of the fastest uh, out there uh, when we talk about in-memory computation. And the Julia code that I showed today is not very, very well optimized Julia code. It's just, you know, like very, kind of the closest equivalent that we could code to the R code. And we already got a uh, hundred times speed up with that. Let's do a final comparison uh, before we uh, finish this video. And this is comparing the fastest uh, R ways or approaches to all of Julia approaches and the result is, ooh, amazingly, the fastest way to do it was Julia Linear Algebra. I'm actually surprised, I thought it was data table. Well, great, good for you, Julia. Okay, so yeah, let's walk through those results a bit. So the Julia Linear Algebra approach was the fastest, and then data table uh, followed suit, then the uh, data table in R, and then we add the linear algebra in R that was almost as fast as data table, but not quite. And following this, we had the data frame approach in Julia. And then after that, we had dplyr. R. And then after that, we had uh, all of the kind of slower, but more like a directly no library uh, coding in either uh, Julia and R. Uh, but the Julia version three, uh, Julia version three was still quite fast. I mean, the, uh, the one with the, the dictionary was uh, almost exactly as fast as dplyr. And then we are really getting into a different type of uh, speed uh, where we uh, use the kind of not optimized double for loop approach um, or even the uh, 
the R approach uh, with the list. And it goes without saying that you do not want to code this algorithm with the first version of the R code. It's 30,000 times slower. This is not the way to go. You do not want to do that. So if you want to know what you should not do, go watch our R speed up video and go read that code. Don't do that code. No, no, no. Another thing to notice is that the worst Julia version was faster than a, a good, a decent R version. And so, you know, like uh, if you're in Julia and you're bad, well, you're not that bad. But if you're an R and you're bad, well, you're very bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 that's it for the pleasantry. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. Come back next week for another video where we compare uh, and where we ask whether we can speed up R by calling other languages or other frameworks. And in some of the coming weeks, there will be one on SQL. So can we speed up R by offloading some of our table manipulation in SQL? Or can we speed up R by calling some Python? Maybe there's the very popular pandas library in Python. And so we will compare uh, pandas to uh, our dplyr or our data table. We will also compare R to uh, like base R to base Python. And so maybe that if you call some Python, you will accelerate your R code and that might be a way to go. We will discover that in the coming weeks. If you would like some tutorial on Julia, uh, please let us know in the comments below. If you like our tutorials, please like and subscribe. That was fun.